Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and uh, this is uh, day 13 of 25 days of tonalism. Sort of halfway, folks. Looking good, eh? And um, that's, you know, good news, bad news. I don't know, but definitely good news that we're doing a George Ness uh, study today and it's of a pretty neat little painting of his and um, I can tell when I uh, condense the uh, <clears throat> my original uh, movie down to fit this uh, format that uh, I spent some extra time on this one you can always tell so this is maybe sped up I don't know, six or seven times faster than I painted it and uh, I absolutely love this painting, and it symbolizes so many things about George Ness that I think are really cool. It's got, you know, that really interesting composition of his that's successful. You know, he's got odd elements, you know, like a dead tree trunk, you know, a log in the foreground, and uh, just a kind of a weird, wispy tree. And, um and you know I'm happy with uh, my study of this painting of course it's you know um, not as uh, not as great as his original but it's a pretty nice little painting it's something that uh, you would uh, definitely want to check out and look at um, so uh, this is uh, Saturday uh, February 11th uh, and uh, for those of you in the way distant future, I guess I could say the year 2017. And uh, I'm in the studio today. I didn't do much actual painting uh, this morning. Um, mostly just coating some uh, paintings that are pretty much finished. And um, uh, gonna take a look, I guess, when I get back in the studio this afternoon and see if I. Uh, if I want to hit any of them a third time, I'm going to probably resist the urge. I'd almost rather just get into a whole new painting because um, so many times now I've noticed that that third pass, sometimes, once in a while, maybe, I don't know, if I had to give you a statistical uh, approximation of how many times, I'd say one in five times uh, that third pass is really improving the painting. And that's not really good enough odds to... Uh, to be messing with things but I will take a critical look at things and if there's anything that's really either egregious that I've noticed or could just be dramatically improved with just a few deft additional brush strokes I might go there um, otherwise uh, <coughs> it was about a mm, two three weeks ago that we finished that uh, 14 uh, a set of 14 studies five of which I chose to make larger paintings and I'm pretty much done with that and I guess that's taken a couple weeks um, I've been looking at those studies and thinking about them. there's probably another four maybe three that uh, I'm going to make into larger paintings and, uh, I'll be thinking about that today too and looking towards board prep and things possibly. I like to set things up on Saturday so that when I come in Monday, um, you know, I, I'm jumping into something, um, either starting something or if necessary finishing something, whatever, it really doesn't matter, it's just another day at work, but uh, I like to have things set up on Saturday. Saturdays I do work, um, and there's lots of times actually I work just as hard at doing painting. It just so happened I pretty much finished the uh, the uh, fifth painting um, in the latest uh, series uh, that I've been working on uh, yesterday. And I've got to a lot of times see what I do is um, I've got to let them sit for a couple days before I, I my, my technique is to coat them with liquid in between each color pass. And not a th super thin coating and not a super thick. And what this does is it evens out the areas that have gone matte um, against the areas that were gloss. And it kind of builds up a, a pretty strong paint film. Um, it's not uh, 
a varnish. I mean, some people would say I was varnishing, but I really don't trust varnishing in between stages because um, at some point in the future, if uh, a conservator was to get in there and start uh, trying to clean off any varnish that had been put on the painting, he would find himself probably removing some of the actual painting. And there's a, quite a lot of artists that were really into uh, adding varnish into their mediums. You know, the main medium being linseed oil. So uh, some artists do a combination of one-third terps, one-third linseed oil, and one-third varnish. And that's quite common. Um, and that's not so much varnish that, you know, I guess, whatever. I don't understand the reason for putting varnish in there at all. I use a drawing oil for my medium which is just basically straight up oil with an alkaloid um, addition for that quick drying and that actually is not much different than the liquid which I use which is an also, an also an alkaloid base the difference is I can't just coat the paintings with this oil it doesn't dry it's designed to be used with the paint as is liquid I should say I'm actually abusing liquid um, but my feeling is is that uh, after the painting's been dry a year or so, um, uh, you you should have it varnished. I mean, if you're going to keep it up in your home for any period of time, varnish will keep it. it will be something that can be easily removed by a conservator in the future, and uh, uh, that's basically the responsibility of the person that owns the painting and I used to varnish things even uh, before I'd sold them I quit doing that though because there's been just too many times I saw something in that painting maybe a year or two later that I felt needed to be adjusted and if the painting is varnished I have to actually clean all that varnish off before I can add to the paint film otherwise anything I painted on top of that varnished uh, would be just wiped away by someone down the road in the future. So there's, you know, uh, that's all good stuff to know. It's kind of boring, I guess. Yeah, but not so boring if you're mm, creating work that you want to last, you know. And that's one of my main attractions to oil paint in general is it has a tendency of lasting, especially when it's on a wood panel uh, like I do as opposed to a um, canvas. Um, the problem with canvas is that canvas over a stretcher bar will expand and contract with differences in temperature and humidity um, at a different rate than the paint film that is sitting on the canvas and this just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Uh, there's plenty of artists that have found good ways around this. Some of them uh, like to, that like to work on canvas um, will mount their canvas to a board. Uh, Got a room? That's not a bad plan, you know. Uh, at least then you're going to have the rigidity as opposed to the stretcher bars. The, uh, the thing is with that solution, though, is that it really only works well on, on small to medium-sized paintings. Once you start getting really expansive with your work um, in size, uh, you know those are going to get really heavy and there will be all sorts of problems that are involved with uh, just a giant sized piece of ply. Um, problems I haven't run into because the largest I've been working uh, is 18 by 24 inches and even that feels a little unwieldy to me. I, it's funny that I never really considered that to be that large a size back uh, in my youth when I was a picture framer but uh, you know it's fairly big compared to the size like what we're looking at here in the video is a five by seven inch you know and uh, you get a heck of a lot of those until 1824 let me tell you um, so anyway that's what's happening um, day 13 Georgia Ness Georgia Ness put him into Google and um, search him out also if you jump into my blog I mean if you just put George and S is one of the tags. Uh, you see, I've done mm, dozens and dozens of uh, studies after George and S, and I probably will continue to do so for a while. 
he's a fascinating dude there's a lot of actual books you can buy for pretty reasonable on Amazon used especially if you live in the States I mean we're talking eight or nine bucks he's a good guy to know he's one of the best painters that ever lived and I recommend uh, you know if you like this stuff get into him check him out anyway this is the end and we will be back next week for day 14 of 25 days of totalism and we'll be back tomorrow with a uh, study or painting of my own stuff so stay tuned for that meanwhile take good care and stay out of trouble